I would like to begin this podcast by posing a question, a kind of thought experiment. Instead of allowing the video to continue, I would like you to stop the video and think about the question because it's very important that you realize it yourself. It's like a joke. If I tell you a joke and you don't understand it and I explain it to you, it will no longer be funny. The question is simply, would you prefer to be the reflection of the moon in water or the moon itself? So think about that. Pause the video if you can before I explain what the question means. The purpose of the question revolves around what the reflection actually means to a pianist. And because we are creative people, we are involved in a what you may call performing art, such as painting or writing or dance, any theory associated is actually very, very secondary. And we use, in our case, the piano, in other people's cases, the paintbrushes and the easel, the canvas, uh, a dance floor, the ballet bar, even a pen. These are merely tools for us to express ourselves. So it must be understood that for expressive people, creative people like we are, we use tools to express who we really are. And that doesn't involve any amount of theory or knowledge. So in the question, the reflection of the moon, we might compare with our expressed selves on our instrument or using our particular tool, piano, paintbrush, pen, whatever it may be. Whereas the moon itself can be likened to us, to our self. I don't know how you understood the question, but I hope it would be something along those lines. So why did I ask it? Many people focus on the reflection. It can be likened to trying to paint a reflection, an artificial reflection on the water, completely ignoring the moon itself. It sounds very crazy to, to paint an artificial reflection of a moon on a river, on any kind of water surface, when the moon already exists to do that without any effort. So by thinking in this way, we can see that we need to realize that we are a moon in this analogy, and that wherever there is water, we are reflected in it. If you find the analogy a little bit complicated, in normal words, what I'm saying is that wherever there is a piano, we play us. As you may know, my philosophy is based on the motto, play you, which basically means be the moon. And don't try to artificially draw a moon on a river. This is very artificial, but unfortunately, this is what happens to many piano, dare I say, beginners, people starting out as pianists, following methods and comparing themselves to others. These are all very restrictive, futile activities. By focusing on the moon, meaning by focusing on ourselves, the reflection, in other words, how we play, will always be honest and accurate, true, all these kinds of adjectives and synonyms. So there, be there becomes no reason or desire to compare ourselves with others or to partake in the absolutely futile task of painting an artificial moon on the water because we are focusing all of our energy on ourselves, on our own being, and wherever there is water, there is a reflection of the moon. What this means is by understanding that the moon is where everything takes place rather than the reflection being where everything takes place because you, of course, cannot have a reflection without a moon, we turn inward in our playing. And this involves not spending time on the piano so much. Why would you, you may ask, not play the piano to become a pianist? Well, I'm going to ask you an opposite question. What does it mean? What does it actually mean to play the piano? Because at the end of the day, it's just a box with some buttons on it. And those buttons will do exactly what you want them to do. And they will produce the sound that you have chosen to produce. If you press it hard, the noise comes out loud. If you press it soft, it comes out uh, quietly. If you play lots of notes together, they will all sound at the same time. If you play particular chords and particular scales and melodies, they will come out exactly as you hear them. So this is the moon reflecting itself in the water. It's a very interesting question. What does it mean to play the piano? What, what is it? Why do we do it? Why do, why do people write poems and books and novels? Why do people dance? Why do painters paint? Why do they paint particular pictures? Because they're expressing themselves. They, they are considering the canvas or the blank page 
as their water and they are simply reflecting their moon on it. Once you see playing the piano in this way, you can focus all of your energy on actually playing you. Now, what does it mean to play you? All you need to understand is that there are two things which make a pianist, as well as some philosophies to understand. But there are two things that make a pianist. One is the visual bearings on the piano without, with your hands behind your back, no hand or finger movements involved. You just look at the piano. You can look at it physically or in your mind. It's the same thing. And you look at it and you know where you are. If I say to you, what's the third of A flat, you'll instantly know it's C. If I say, what's the sixth of D flat, you'll instantly know it's B flat. The fifth of D, you know, is an A because you've mastered your major scales. Major scales are the foundation of playing the piano. Consider that you could spend a year reading every book ever written, every Wikipedia article ever written on piano theory, on music theory. You could read the lives of composers. You could learn all different kinds of scales and chords. And then after a year, sit at the piano and you'll not play any different than had you not spent one year reading thousands of pages. You will always play you. So in other words, no amount of painting an artificial moon on the water can reproduce the moon. So the first thing is to understand that by looking at the piano in your mind or physically, all you need to see, despite all the theory involved, is 12 major scales of seven notes because everything comes from that and any scale or any chord can be discovered by simply naming the note values in any major scale even if it's a very complicated scale even if we talk about pentatonic scales minor scales if you separate those as something different you're giving yourself more baggage you're giving yourself a harder workout to be able to find them on the piano and is it even necessary to know them what would you do with a pentatonic scale if you had it if you know all the major scales which can be accumulated very, very quickly. This knowledge can be acquired very, very quickly in just a few days. And I say to you, the major scale in E flat, and you tell me E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, and E flat again, because you know the template of a pentatonic scale, which is one, two, three, five, six, you will simply tell me the, pen the pentatonic scale in the key of E flat because you know the major scale of E flat. So you will know to play E flat, F, G, one, two, three, B flat and C, five and six. So by knowing the major scale, you are then able instantly to find any other scale based on knowing the template of that extra additional scale. So that's one thing to understand. All you need to know are your 12 major scales, very, very, very quickly achievable. The second thing which makes a pianist is that you have 10 fingers and each finger must be equally trained as the other one. Now, how is that possible? Think about this, it is not necessary to have a piano to train your fingers. The piano was not invented for you to develop your fingering. You can do what I'm going to talk about in your car, just laying in bed with your hands on your chest, sitting at the table right where you are now. Do it anywhere, even when you're walking in the street, if uh, there are not too many people around. Imagine an army of 10 men. These are your 10 fingers. An army is never trained in a battle. An army is trained before the battle so that they may perform in the battle. And after each battle, they gain experience. And you may say they improve. They become more experienced. But they are never trained in a battle. They're trained before the battle. And that's exactly what you must do. That's how you must see the piano. So in combination, in tandem with the visual awareness of the 12 major scales, which provide you the opportunity to find any chord and any other scale immediately, plus you never lose your bearings on the piano. You always know where you are. All you need to do for part two is to make sure that each of your 10 fingers can function independently as individual soldiers and they can all work together because they all know each other and they all get on very well. Now, how would you prefer to train as a soldier? Would you prefer to turn up and be thrown into a battle, worried that you're gonna survive? It's a very, very difficult situation. It's a very, it's an uphill struggle. It's a worry, it's a stress, it's a fear, it's a doubt. Am I gonna survive this battle? Are any of the others, how are the others doing? Are the others okay? But if you can imagine that you arrive and you go into an air-conditioned room and uh, there's a nice bottle of wine waiting for you, some food, some cheese, something nice, and there's absolutely no stress, there's no sign of a battlefield, in other words, the piano, and you're all talking and you're all doing your exercises individually, you're all lifting weights and jogging, eating healthy foods, drinking lots of water, and you all know each other very well, you all work in pairs and you alternate. And you don't see yourselves as a group of five men over here and a group of five men over here. 
you see yourself as 10 individuals who all work well together. And that's exactly how the pianist must see their 10 fingers, not as two hands or five fingers, but as 10 fingers who all know each other and have all worked together before, before the battle, before they take on a piece of music. A combination of this way of thinking combined with you sitting at the piano knowing the kind of music that you want to play and the kind of repertoire that you would like to acquire will make you an extraordinary pianist very quickly because you will have automatically removed all of the hurdles which a traditional piano course would present to you, especially that of keys. Because every major scale is exactly the same as any other major scale, and because we don't think in terms of black notes and white notes, in other words, the whole piano could be red, every key could be a different colour, it could be the, the spectrum of a rainbow, we could even label the notes as different letters. We could say N, M, or M, N, O, P, Q, O, S, T. And sharps and flats could be renamed as rubber and chalk, completely irrelevant words. It doesn't matter what the labels are. The fact remains that there are 12 buttons and they each follow the template for a major scale, which is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half steps, as I've discussed in other podcasts and videos and in my articles. So to label one as different in any way from another is wrong because they are exactly the same. And any combination of uh, black notes and white notes doesn't mean anything because there are no black and white notes. So what I wish you could do is to buy a piano with multicolored keys and then we would have the same discussion about black and white notes and you would be speechless. And that's exactly how you should be because theory is just words about words. Again, it's like painting a reflection of the moon on the river, completely futile. So understand that by being the moon and knowing that your reflection will always be cast on water perfectly because you play you and because the way that you play you is a combination of the two things. You understand all 12 keys, you see them visually, you're never lost and you've made your 10 soldiers work independently and with each other without having to use a piano to do so to achieve this, you will become the most honest, purposeful pianist you can possibly become in a time frame which is almost superhuman. It would not be believed that you have only been playing the piano for six months, for example, by someone who's been playing for 10 years, because you would be instantly at ease in all 12 keys. You would be able to transpose any melody and any chord into any key because you are following it as, as a number sequence. You are following it as a template. And that means that every key is seen as the same thing. You need to feel at home in one key in exactly the same way as you feel at home in another key. If you're in the key of F sharp, it is completely irrelevant that there are five black notes and two white notes. If you're in the key of D, it's irrelevant that there are two black notes and the rest are white notes, the other five. Absolutely irrelevant. They are merely numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So from now, I would recommend not playing the piano for a week from the time of listening to this recording, really a week, honestly, really a week. Close your piano lid, turn off and disconnect your electric piano and spend time with your fingers. Spend time looking at your hand and observing your soldiers. Spend time wiggling each finger for maybe 10 or 20 seconds. At the moment, I'm wiggling my thumb, just moving it up and down. There's no stress, I'm just wiggling it naturally. Now my index finger up and down, bending it a little bit. No other fingers are moving. Then my middle finger up and down completely and then bending it a little bit. Same with the ring finger, same with the little finger. And then alternate them on both hands, of course, and then together because they are all one. Now I'm alternating my thumb and my index finger. You may do that for 10 or 15 seconds, but focus on that. You might call it mindful movement and then alternate completely steadily your thumb with your middle finger steadily equal movement no stress no force no need for speed and then your thumb with your ring finger and your thumb with your little finger and then move on to the index finger your index finger is primary so that can alternate again with the thumb but focusing on the index and then the index can alternate with the middle the index can alternate with the ring the index can alternate with the little finger only and then move to the next finger the middle finger can then alternate with the thumb the index finger then it can alternate with the ring finger and then it can alternate with the little finger. And then the ring finger, you get the idea. Doing that on both hands, that is all you can ever do on a piano. You are limited because you only have 10 uh, fingers. You are limited to how many combinations of fingers you can use. So there is a limit. So once you spend time working on your fingers in that way, whilst seeing all 12 major scales as one, when you return to the piano in a week, you will play differently. 
you'll play better than you did one week before. You'll see the piano in a different way and you'll have a kind of mental peace, a kind of ease. And this will give you great joy. And that is the reason I made this podcast. I will thank you for listening and your comments and uh, suggestions are most welcome. Uh, subscriptions, of course, always most appreciated as well. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in number three. All the best. Bye for now.